The Mexican axolotl is a super regenerator that can regrow many organs, including the entire limb. After the limb is amputated, cells are recruited from mature tissue to the site of injury where they form a mass of cells called the blastema, which rebuilds the limb. Connective tissue cells are critical for regeneration to happen. Connective tissue cells make up the cartilage skeleton, cells that surround the skeleton called periskeletal cells, dermal cells underneath the epidermis, and cells that surround blood vessels, which are called pericytes. One long-standing question has been, where do cells for the blastema come from? Do cells from these different tissue compartments have equal contributions and dynamics during regeneration? To answer this question, I followed cells during regeneration of the axolotl fingertip because it has all the different connective tissues, but it's small enough to follow individual cells by taking an image every day during the three weeks of regeneration. We found that some cells have limited contribution. Cartilage cells divide, but they don't move into the blastema. Pericytes enter the blastema, but they stay attached to blood vessels and only make more pericytes. In contrast, dermal and periskeletal cells make all of the new skeleton, and they make more dermal and periskeletal cells during regeneration. Cells migrated to enter the blastema at different days during the regrowth of the fingertip. That timing of arrival dictated what cells would make. Cells that arrived early made the new skeleton, while late arriving cells made new periskeletal and dermal cells. So what activates cells to migrate towards the injury site? To find out, we made wounds in monolayers of cultured axolotl cells and then added different factors to find such a pro-migratory signal. We found that the protein PDGF-BB boosted cell migration in cultured cells, and inhibiting PDGF signaling in vivo completely blocks cell movement, showing that PDGF-induced migration is critical for forming the blastema. Our findings get us closer to understanding how the axolotl can rebuild the limb, which hopefully can be applied to advances in wound healing and regeneration in humans.